It is officially spring, and what better way to start off the season than with a look at the Spring Thunder. Today I'm going to be talking to you all about my brand new Spring Thunder, I'm going to tell you all about this blaster, some of the accessories I got, and then show you some initial gameplay footage. But before I get started, a few quick notes. Uh, first off, I purchased this with my own money. For some of you that doesn't matter, for some of you it really does matter, but just getting it out in the open, all of this you see here, I purchased with my own money from GDOP26's Etsy though he did include one of these extra, so thank you. Second off is that even though this is a Model 4, uh, they're up to Model 5s, doesn't matter, Model 1, 2, 3, whatever, uh, these blasters are not intended for younger users. They are advertised as 16 and up. And third off, I mean, look at this. Shells, it's 3D printed. This is a gimmicky blaster. This is a specialty blaster. If you like the gimmick, this might be for you, but I'm not gonna recommend everyone needs to go out and get one of these right now. They are definitely cool, and there's a lot of practicality that can be brought with them, but they are specialty, and you have to buy into that gimmick to really enjoy one of these things. So with that out of the way, there's a lot to talk about. Let's get started. Hello everyone, my name is Brett, and sometimes I wear a beret, and today we are talking shotguns, because there really is no Nerf shotgun that does it better than the Spring Thunder. These have been around for some time. I never actually thought that I would pick one up myself, but man, did it grind on me for a couple years, and here we are. This, uh, in particular, is the Model 4 Green Goblin variant. No Springer sticker included. It's a shell-fed shotgun. Round is chambered. One more. So it has a four plus one capacity, meaning there's one loaded right now in the breech, and then there's four in the tube as well. But we'll talk more about the shells in a little bit. Let's just focus right now on the blaster itself. I'm gonna move some of this other stuff out of the way. In my opinion, half the fun of a shotgun is the spray you get when you fire it. The scattering of the darts is why you would use such a platform. The other half is the well, shell ejecting nature, I suppose. Now the Trilogy and the Sludge Fire both have kind of done this before. Uh, you can modify the Sludge Fires to eject a little bit better, and the Trilogies, uh, I don't know if anyone's done some major modifications to make sure that those shells reliably pop out. Both the Sludge Fire and the Trilogy take different kind of shells. So what does this one do though? Well, this is shell ejection. Loading the Spring Thunder is relatively straightforward. It's also great that you can prime it, have one shell in, and just keep loading. What's also nice is that if you want a particular round in here, well, I didn't pull it back all the way. Whoops, sorry camera. I can now just throw in an extra one too, and I haven't disturbed anything else in the tube. Well, that was a good one. Because this last little bit that you pull down on is what actually launches a shell from the tube into the chamber. I like that that's an option. I like that I can actually pay attention to uh, what shell I have here and decide which one I want to fire next because even with only four in the tube, I do sometimes forget what I've loaded in here. Even though it's not a whole lot, it does happen in the heat of the moment. Whoops, the grip here on the back feels perfectly sized for my hand, so I have uh, no problems with that. The trigger is responsive and easy to pull. Though I do kind of wonder about this front priming grip. It's a little small, actually. And I know I am not the biggest person, but if I had known it was this small, I may have actually gotten one of the bigger ones. I'm also not a huge fan of these indents here, since they do just kind of lead to this PVC tube, uh, which is stationary, right? So I don't want to really wrap my hands in there too much. But it does overall kind of feel small. So maybe I'd recommend if you were looking at, uh, at this grip versus the larger one, maybe going with the larger one. There are spaces all across the top for Picatinny rail. As you can see, I only got a few of them. I got three sections of four inch, so there's two there and one there right now. I can move them around as I see fit, but I honestly would recommend getting all of it if possible, just because it keeps the blaster from flexing a little bit. Added security might be nice. This uh, muzzle piece was actually something that I had a friend of mine print out. You might know him as Captain Xavier, so thank you, sir, for doing that. These actually don't come with a muzzle piece included, and I kind of wish they did, just because a no barrel might look a little weird 
If I had known that, I would have picked one of those up too. This barrel shroud was from Ehdrian on Thingiverse, and I think it fits really well. The stock right here is also not included in the Barebone Spring Thunder, but I got mine in black to match the back of it, and it's a pretty good length for me, so I don't have any complaints about that. Uh, these little mounts on the right and the left are also good for if you want to sling your blaster, so convenient and a good size for me, honestly. It fits the blaster nicely, and installation was really easy with a couple bolts to the side. You do have to open the back, but assembly instructions online made that pretty simple. Also matching in black, I purchased a shell mount, and this can be mounted anywhere on the Picatinny rail here. It holds six shells, just like so, and it just makes it for easier reloading, because you can pick them off the top. You can also see what ones are in there instead of just putting them in a, a dump pouch, perhaps. Maybe I'm still doing something wrong, but when I do install this on the tack rail, I can never actually get it to be straight. And I don't know how well you can see that, but there's a little bit of wobble on this. Not terribly too much, but it's it's this part... I, I don't understand why. There seems to be a little bit of a raise on one side or another. I don't know if that's just a design problem or, or what. So having this is actually, I think, a really good uh, inclusion for your Spring Thunder if you want to be able to see all your stuff. You could probably have a whole rail of them and I mean, it would look goofy, right? But it would be practical. The bandolier is another option you can get if you want to hold your shells more efficiently. This one holds 25. So with the 35 that I got, uh, 25 in here, six on top, the rest go in the blaster. That's full capacity for me. It's a good number. Now. This bandolier is interesting because it does hold them, but some of them are a little tighter than others. I'm not sure why that is. I can put it around myself as I'm going to do it right now and you can't see. There's a little bit of refinement work that bleh, could be done to this perhaps, uh, but bandoliers hold more shells and it may not be super necessary for you is my point. And the last additional item in the mix, of course, is the little keychain, because I thought that was cute. So these little spring thunders are, I mean, there's meant to be keychains, there's a little hole in the back, you can wear it around something, I don't know, it reminds me of my uh, deploy keychains from Grihas gear, so, but it's spring thunder. Pew pew pew. Now I do want to talk some prices really quick before I get into some other aspects here. Uh, these little keychains were 250 each, or I'm sorry, this little keychain was 250 and he included a second one, so thank you again. The bandolier is $22, the shell mount is $7, and then the three Picatinny rail sections together were $14. And the blaster itself was $210, and that included the blaster plus the 35 shells I got with it and the 35 shells were split between five different flavors. At first, I only got 25 shells, and those were split even, five, 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 yeah. And then after messaging GDOP saying, hey, I think you missed some shells, he said, oh, sure, I'll send some over. I asked for the rest to be rival buckshot because they are fun, but spoiler alert. So that's where the cost breakdown went into this. Excuse me, the stock was also separate. That was $11. That's the blaster and stuff and slightly out of frame. <laughs> Let's talk about the shells. The reason the Spring Thunder platform is so unique and interesting is in part because of the shells. They're customizable and people are making new ones all the time, but these are the five that I got and let's go over them. The first one is the Mega Shell. It's, it says Mega on the side, so it's a Mega Shell. This one fires two different types of Mega Darts, I would say. You can fire three quarters or half inch mega darts. Obviously, there's a downside to that. You have to cut your mega darts. These are obviously not genuine megas, these are the AccuFake Whirlwind type tips. Uh, but they fit in there nice and snug, and a mega round is a mega round. So, the pros for this is that, well, you can fire megas. And the cons are, of course, you have to cut your darts. Performance on that is 75, 85 feet per second. Next one is the Flechette Round. And this is my Boomco one. Takes three Boomco straws, nice and snug in there, ain't going anywhere. And it fires Boomco in a nice spread. I really enjoy this one because three shots is satisfying as heck. And you pretty much know where these are going to go. It's three shots, it's good. Then of course we have our Buckshot round, the rival one. You can put one ball, two balls, or three balls in here. I think there might be some difference in performance depending on how 
tight the balls are inside of this shell. Genuine rival rounds feel different than proton rounds or the Adventure Force tactical strike rounds and are different than the X-Shot chaos rounds. I don't know exactly what the best combo is, like if you want the, the least thick one in the back or you want the thickest one in the back and then stop, whatever. But I did get eh, about 90 to 105 with a single every now and then, so that's comparable to stock rival performance. Next one is the birdshot round. So this has a slot for two elite style darts. Now, off the bat, I can tell you <laughs> that there's a, a bit of a problem with this one is that this is dart on dart. Now with boomco on boomco, that's a straw on straw, you know that the straws are going to maintain their shape. That's a great thing about boomco. Darts are not so great when you mash them together and you can already see these do not want to go into the shell so much and they are definitely getting squished. If I leave them in there for too long, they will be unhappy. These are elite darts though. These are some of the thinnest foam out there. So this just doesn't work sometimes if you are loading a thicker foam like Adventure Force Waffle. But, and dumb of me for not testing this extensively, half darts are really fun inside of here. So you could load two or four if you double stack them out of here and get another shotgun spread. So that's useful. Same as the last one, which is the, it says mod two. I guess it's a single elite dart or single dart. So you could put one dart in there or you could put two half darts. So if I did have to rank my favorites, I would probably say that the single shot is my least favorite. Behind that are the, the two shot, whoop, goodbye. The two shot and the mega, and then it's a toss up between Rival and Boomco. So if I had to recommend two things to fire out of your Spring Thunder shotgun, it would be the shotgun rounds. Though honorable mention to the half dart shotgun. Honestly, if there was another one to be made, we can bring Ultra into the conversation. Firing one dart out of this is not my favorite go-to but Ultra might work just fine because it is shorter, so it fits inside. Ultra might fly straight, it might not. Who knows? So there's a lot to love about the Spring Thunder from gimmicks to accessories, but before I go any further, I do unfortunately have to talk about something not so positive, and that is print quality. I am a customer. This is a product I waited a long time for. I ordered this in the beginning of December, received it at the end of February. It was made clear that these are not very quick to uh, make and ship out. I'm not holding GDOP uh, to some crazy standard of getting these out within a week. He makes that clear, I get it. I have purchased a lot of 3D printed blasters now in my time. I don't print my own blasters, but I've received a lot that I've learned a little bit about what looks good, what feels good, and what looks not so good, and what <laughs> doesn't feel good. And I ran this by a couple other people too, just to make sure that I wasn't trying to come off as mean, but Here's the thing, the print quality on this is kind of low, and if I'm being frank, it's the lowest quality that I have in my collection. I'm fine with being a little easy on the shells. These are things that will get lost. They might get stepped on. They're expendable, right? You can reprint new shells. That's what's so great about them. These are things that you can just mass produce. They, they look a little rough in some places, and especially on the sides, you can see all of them are a little bit different too. Again, if it's fine on the inside, who cares? But there are some rough parts. It doesn't look like it's any particular shell type. It's just overall, there's some, some problems. You hear people saying, oh, Brett, well, that's what you get with 3D printed stuff. Because if they work, who cares? But I did have a problem with one. Here's one of my shells. It just broke. Separation, so I can see how much info was there. Yeah, not so good. And this makes me a little bit concerned about my other ones, just seeing that that was all that connected it. You can't really repair this. This is just kind of dead. I don't really want to try this in my blaster either. Now, we need to talk about the blaster. There are two parts on this blaster that uh, if you're not looking inside too much, I would consider to be some of the gnarlier parts, and unfortunately, they're what you touch the entire time. The first one is the handle. And I have not gotten rid of any of this because it needed to be shown in this light, I guess. This is rough. It is rough to the touch. 
It feels very unpleasant and I do not like it. Anyone I've ever handed this to has said that is bad and I would agree. Now funny enough, my hand doesn't go down there too much so it hasn't been a huge problem but every time I slide it down I feel sharp pain. The other is the front pump grip. Maybe I got rid of some of it before but there were some more burrs on the inside here. You can see a little there's some sharp parts on this too that I'm, I'm not a fan of and I I've given this to a few people who when they primed it they felt discomfort and you are priming that all the time. It's smooth, it's fine, it's not cutting me but not high quality is unfortunately the description I have to go with. Quality is a bit rough, especially on the inside. I'm trying not to be mean. This isn't just my opinion. I think there could be room for improvement here. Prints like this can't go out. This is just really bad. And I know that this is not the only quality of handle I've seen um, go out to a customer. I would recommend trying to improve on some of those if possible, GDOP. There's one thing though that is very <laughs> understandable for me to be a little bit disappointed in and it's not the print quality there are some scratches on the back i know that's not printer quality it's just like that's a scuff and i would be scratching my head as to how that happened but unfortunately you showed a picture of it in your spring thunder user group because you stacked all the blasters on top of each other I would recommend going forward, please don't do that. I think those are reasonable gripes. I just want, I want these blasters to be great for people because it is just so much fun. You'll see that in a second. Um, I really look forward to using this more in games too. Here's my GoPro Hero 5 session. I'm gonna mount this, thanks shell holder. I'm going to mount this to the side near the back on the other side of the shell ejection port to get a secondary view because when I'm just holding it in front of me, you only see like this part. So that could be fun. Those are some of my thoughts. Let's get into the first time I used this in a game. That is a library, close quarters, kaboom. Hi. Oh. Oh. Hi. Oh. They were <clears throat> to run. Oh! Thanks, GoPro. <laughs> that is debatable. You can't prove it. That said, let's change it again. Oh, frick. Whoop. 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 Bruh. Missed. It's a what? Hmm. Oh, come on. Sorry. Sorry. Your shell hit me. <laughs> That's okay. Friendly fire. Well, actually, I don't know. Your shell hit me. Does that count? <laughs> Do you want to die? I got hit by a shell, and I loved it. I see that. <clears throat> okay, he's playing that kind of game. I, I, I assumed. Had to, I had to. You son of a. <laughs> You're allowed to run, I guess. <clears throat> Go away. You're the only one. Oh, that accuracy. Why did I load elite darts? I am invincible. I'm also grabbing all of my empty shells. Ah, still invincible. I have like one shell left. I think that's two. Mm. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, man. Sweet relief. Mm. 
<clears throat> That's one left for me. For the last time. I knew it would end like this. Oh, baby, a triple! That was what? That was a few. Oh, do they all count? That's the question of the day. Uh, how about yes, because that was my last loaded shell. <laughs> And that was a look at my Model 4 Green Goblin Spring Thunder. Thank you everyone for watching. Hope you learned a little bit more about this blaster if you didn't know everything already. I seriously have had so much fun with this as I keep saying and I cannot wait to show you guys more footage of it in action. Hope GDOP takes everything I said uh, to heart. Again, it's meant to be constructive criticism, not just criticism. I really do think that this platform is amazing. I know he's worked so hard to put uh, amazing work into this blaster and his upcoming projects too. And I, I just want people to to be able to enjoy that and have more of these out on the field because this really is uh, an awesome thing uh, that has been created and fills a void of shell ejecting blasters that Hasbro's not doing so good at comparatively. Sludge fire is still amazing, but this is versatile and it's really, really satisfying to fire. Thanks again, everyone, for watching, and I'll see you later.